Well, I guess it's just past the hour, so uh, I presume a few more will join us in a, in a moment. Uh, so today, uh, Praveen is going to lead us in the study, and he will explain how he wants to do it. Uh, he will also begin a series, and so from time to time, we will take breaks from the series, and uh, so today I have a break from mine. Uh, so... Let me ask for God's uh, blessings on our time together. So join me as I pray. Our loving, gracious Father, we are so grateful that we can assemble again to uh, come together to learn, to grow in the knowledge that you have given to us and prepared for us through the scriptures. And uh, today through Praveen, we ask for your very special blessings upon him as he leads us uh, to continue to upholds the knowledge of scripture in our lives. We are so grateful that you have preserved scripture. We know that, Lord, that so many in the world uh, sometimes don't even have access to scripture. But uh, we are so grateful that we can continue to engage in this Bible study. So we do want your inspiration, certainly, and uh, uh, opening our minds and hearts to understand and continue to strengthen our faith through these studies. So we want to just uh, uh, pray and uh, thank you for Suryamurti who is recovered now and uh, thank you for healing him and continue to remember us father as we uh, try to struggle against various illnesses and of course the pandemic that's going on. We want to commit this study in this hour into your hands uh, and uh, that for your blessings, and we do this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Over to you, Praveen. Good evening to you all, and uh, good morning to Nagas. And, uh, yeah, it's this year, uh, it's going to be quite different for us in Bible study, I guess. Uh, as Pastor mentioned, you're going to see uh, your new faces, like uh, uh, more of uh, our uh, speaking team will be joining us, but uh, we just wanted, I and Pastor wanted to start it, um, we start with us uh, as tag team and then uh, others can join. Uh, as Pastor also mentioned, and we are going to have wide variety of uh, uh, styles of studies uh, in our Bible study this year. And pastor started church history, and I'm going. I'm also going to do a few series, and these series are going to be on uh, uh, various genres. Also, uh, the I'm starting this time with um, uh, a character study, and then um, uh, I'm also going to pick up some of the difficult questions we, uh, which uh, our members have. We'll take those uh, difficult scripture, scriptures to interpret as well as the questions. Uh, and we will discuss about them and uh, if possible and God enables us and uh, I also would like to uh, introduce uh, a survey of the New Testament and as well as um, this thing uh, what we'll call a uh, Bible study methods and rules of interpretation. So these are the things that we have in you know my in our mind uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, so based on the time and uh, we situation and we'll pick up and we'll choose and switch in between these genres of uh, uh, Bible study. That's what uh, we have planned for the year 2022 and then uh, uh, the weeks that follow. So as I mentioned today that uh, I'm going to take a character study. And we have, we all, all of us have studied the character of Jesus. So I'm not going to start with that uh, because uh, years and years we are studying and throughout eternity, we are going to study his character and his love. And now I'm going to uh, pick up one of the characters that is most, one of, one of the most important characters after Jesus in New Testament. You might have, uh, you know, guessed already in your mind with the character that I'm going to discuss today. It is nothing but Apostle Paul. This I'm going to do as a three-day, three-week series. And this week, I'm going to just present uh, the, some of the facts and uh, events that happen in the life of Apostle Paul to, so that we can set some kind of background uh, as we study about he, uh, his theology and his writings. 
So this week we'll be studying about some details about Apostle Paul. And the next week we are going to discuss about uh, the theology of Apostle Paul. Why, uh, how he developed certain theological uh, uh, perspectives uh, in the New Testament. In fact, if you read the Bible, uh, especially the New Testament, Apostle Paul is the one who brought so many kinds of analogies and some new theological uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, truths and uh, he taught them. Uh, in book of Acts, we find some and uh, in his writing uh, very much. In his writings very much, we can find his themes, theological themes and the perspectives. And the third week, I'm going to uh, take uh, the teachings or themes that Apostle Paul taught through his epistles, each epistle individually. So in the second uh, week, we, am going, we are going to discuss overall theology of Apostle Paul and how he developed what the theological perspective, how he developed what he developed. And in the third week, we are going to discuss about uh, the themes from each episode. But uh, this week, it's basically some kind of background setup that we are going to do. So many of the things that I'm going to share now, you already might have known. Uh, so kindly uh, <clears throat> bear with me. And as uh, we go into some kind of simple taste, uh, spiritual discussion, uh, I would I encourage you to share your thoughts on that. So Apostle Paul, How he describes himself, we can find it. We can find in every episode that Apostle Paul writes, and most common uh, description he gives for himself is Apostle. Paul, I mean, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. This is the most repeated. Um, uh, this is the most repeated description he gives. We might have heard the word Christopher, 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 in many places, but we might have not known the meaning of the word. The word Christopher means the one who carries Jesus, otherwise a servant of Jesus. So Apostle Paul would like to introduce himself as servant of Jesus. And uh, he is called to be an apostle. That's also Apostle Paul writes. And there are so many controversies we find in the uh, New Testament, especially in book of First Corinthians, where Apostle Paul was uh, uh, discussing about his apostleship and he's giving the reasons and the uh, proofs behind his apostleship. And uh, we can find uh, <clears throat> those information in the Bible. Uh, but Apostle Paul, uh, he he also loves to introduce himself as an apostle. Apostle is a poem, the meaning of the word apostle is the one who sent out. That is the basic meaning of the word. In, in, in modern English, we can substitute that word with a missionary. Missionary is someone who was chosen and sent out with a purpose. So Apostle Paul considers himself uh, as an apostle. Uh, which tells his focus on his mission and what he is going to do, his goal. And he loves to introduce himself as the servant of Jesus Christ. And we all know Apostle Paul is a, a not the same person from the beginning till the end, but he was in the beginning, he was called as Saul. And then he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Then he changed into Paul. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and he continued the same name as a missionary. As Saul, like, you know, from his childhood, childhood like, you know, he was born and brought up in Tarsus. Uh, Tarsus was a, uh, a center of thriving uh, culture and philosophy, philosophy and education. Okay, it is like a metropolitan, so like a metropolitan city and uh, where... Uh, the Greek culture was very evident and very powerful over there and Greek philosophy also. And he, he got very good education uh, from uh, Tarsus and as well as he got, he studied uh, in Jerusalem as well. And Saul is also was, is called an Hellenistic Jew. Hellenistic Jew means a Jew who speaks Greek or a Jew who has more influence of Greek upon them. It can be in the language or it can be in his education. 
So a person who, who got more Greek influence is called Hellenistic person. So Saul is a Hellenistic Jew, which tells he has quite a good grip and influence of uh, Greek philosophy and Greek culture upon him, as well as he is a very strong Jew. And he is also a Roman citizen. Okay, Roman citizenship is something very great. And he, Apostle Paul uses this particular thing uh, very wisely. While he, when he was uh, arrested in Jerusalem, they, they wanted to punish him. Uh, Apostle Paul, he is this, uh, this I mean, he is uh, focused that he has to go and witness before Caesar. Because of that reason, though his case was completely free, where uh, the king, uh, king and Ag uh, Agrippa can release him, he desires that he has to be sent to Rome so that he can witness about Jesus in front of Caesar. We can read few chapters before his uh, uh, arrest in Jerusalem, especially in Philippi, where uh, some prophets. Uh, <clears throat> Well, what is his name? Um, uh, there, there are there are some prophets. Suddenly, I could not remember the name of the prophets. The prophets are there, uh, prophesied and said, "You are going to be arrested and persecuted." But still, he is focused, and they told, they asked, they discouraged him going to Jerusalem. But he is focused about his goal, so he leaves. Uh, uh, he leaves Philippi and goes to. Uh, Jerusalem and where he gets arrested and he knows that he has to witness Jesus in front of Caesar so uh, he was very courageously going for the goal he has and uh, he used his uh, citizenship also there to take him to what he wanted that is um, standing in front of Caesar. The same thing he used in uh, Rome also. Get the, uh, Roman citizens, they get special privileges for some kind of uh, spe uh, special tax benefits, some kind of legal uh, leverage they have. And no Roman citizen can be punished or uh, no Roman citizen can be beaten without proper execution. Uh, so what we call prosecution, not execution, excuse me for that word. So he uses them and... Uh, uh, he makes use of his citizenship very well. If you read Book of Acts, we find how he used that. And we don't know how Apostle Paul got his citizenship. And mostly, uh, uh, most of the scholars say they got, they might have got the citizenship from his uh, uh, father. And how his father got that, we don't know. There are many ways to get uh, Roman citizenship. It can be bought with high price. And uh, it can be uh, another kind of citizenship where they, uh, they can be sl freed slaves. They get some kind of benefits and uh, either that or in that level or Apostle Paul's family must be very highly educated people and rich people who might have been in um, Caesar service or Roman government service through which they can obtain uh, citizenship. We don't know how they got, but uh, most of the people suggest that uh, Apostle Paul's family must be very rich and uh, they might have bought the citizenship for themselves. And which also uh, can be uh, supported by the very uh, reason that Apostle Paul studied under Gamaliel and he is a Pharisee. Mostly Pharisees are rich people among the Jews. And uh, uh, somebody studying under Gamaliel. Gamaliel is a very uh, highly qualified uh, Jewish rabbi here from Jerusalem. Um, Apostle Paul studied under him. So uh, people like aristocrat family kind of people only will get such kind of uh, privilege uh, to study under Gamaliel. And, uh, for those who don't know Gamaliel, Gamaliel is a person uh, who told uh, the other Pharisees and leaders when they uh, they arrested Paul, sorry, Peter and John and they were uh, torturing them and say he's, he's the one who said in Acts chapter 4 if this Christianity, this movement is from God, it will survive and if it is not from God, it will not. If it is from God we, we cannot even stop it. And since then uh, the concentration Jewish, uh, Jewish people they have shown on Christians was changed actually. We'll find that 
uh, in Acts chapter 4. He is the same person, Gamaliel. So Apostle Paul studied under him. He's a Pharisee. He studied under Gamaliel. He belongs to the tribe of Benjamin in uh, uh, Judah. I mean, Ju uh, the, among the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, he was a tent maker. Most of um, uh, the Jewish people who are outside uh, Jerusalem and outside Israel and all men, either they are into textile business or this tent business, more many of them. So this is a very common profession uh, among the Jews. And if we talk about uh, Saul's conversion, you know, he was a Pharisee first, he a very jealous Pharisee, and he's very jealous for Jewish traditions. And uh, he was a persecutor of Christians. And uh, after the uh, encounter, he became the, uh, the one who was persecuted for the gospel. And Saul never met Jesus, yet he had a mystical conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Paul, uh, Paul or Saul, whom we are talking about, he never met Jesus. Uh, he heard about Jesus, that is for sure, but he never met uh, Jesus. Probably he must be in a... He must not be in Jerusalem. Uh, that is the very reason. And then uh, he knew the uh, he knew Apostle Peter and James, the brother of Jesus. I mean, the, the, these are the things I'm telling. I'm sharing. These are the things before his ministry. Okay, uh, uh, he knows uh, Peter and James after his conversion, after the <clears throat> uh, his encounter and his time with God in Arabia. He came and meets. Uh, Peter and James, and he made three uh, mission mission uh, mission journeys. We find mission trips we can call about, uh, and these in these three missionary uh, trips he formed and he built most of the churches that he has built. In the first missionary trip, he built most of the ch churches. Second, second, and he is the he is the one who set the model. Uh, for this church planting ministry that we are talking about. Uh, he's the one <clears throat> who started it. And uh, uh, <clears throat> second missionary journey, and uh, he went, actually, he raised funds for the Jerusalem and he brought. And uh, in the third missionary journey, he went and encouraged the churches. And that is the end of his, uh, you know, mission trips. And from there, he went to Jerusalem and then to Rome. Paul's belief that Gentile Christians did not have to be circumcised or uh, the fellow uh, and, or to follow the Jewish law enabled a broad group of people to obtain salvation. You might have discussed about it last week, <clears throat> the Jerusalem Council. Paul played a very major role in Jerusalem Council, Paul and Barnabas. And these are the people very strongly advocated and spoke for Gentiles and saying, Gentiles don't need to be circumcised and they don't need to follow and uh, follow in the sense they don't need to keep all the mosaic covenant mosaic laws in order to obtain salvation. But salvation is for everyone. And I, I sometimes I really wonder the way God works and he, he works in such a miraculous way. He chose Paul from a Hellenistic group. See, he's a very strong Jew. And a highly educated person in Greek philosophy and all. That's the reason in Acts chapter 17, he quotes about uh, uh, Greek poets and all. He chose God wanted to bring gospel to the Gentiles and he found the right person uh, who, who can, who can uh, both speak to Jews as well as to Gentiles. You know, he, uh, the, the way God works is really uh, mystery. He works in mysterious ways. He chose the right person and uh, he did a great job through uh, Paul. And he uh, presently, whatever the Christianity we are believing, and he is the one who uh, laid the foundational beliefs about Christianity. And if you, you, think, you read about Paul's theology, there are three major themes in Paul's theology and which we'll uh, discuss more in the uh, following weeks. I know many of you know the details of Paul. That is the very reason I'm, I'm skipping very common, very simple, the common uh, details that you, you, you might have already known. So the three major aspects of Paul's theology are number one, Jesus died and resurrected. Hence, because Jesus died and resurrected, all humans are dead and are risen from dead with Jesus. And... They will be resurrected 
they will be resurrected as well through belief in Jesus Christ. Whoever believed in Jesus, they will be resurrected. So in other words, and what I'm talking about is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, words uh, 19 onwards. God was in Christ. So if one man died for all, then all died. So Jesus died and resurrected. And in him, we are dead and resurrected. And we are going to experience that resurrection. Especially the people who believe in Jesus are going to experience that uh, resurrection in the days to come. And number two aspect uh, from Paul's theology is salvation is available to whole humanity. All are included in the salvation plan of God. This is something uh, exclusively brought by Apostle Paul. You, we won't find the same thing with the other apostles. Apostle Paul brings that and then other apostles followed him. And uh, uh, Apostle Peter also take, uh, I mean, he speaks about Paul in his uh, epistle saying, Apostle Paul also is teaching some great things, but they're difficult to understand. Uh, but he asks us to consider them. Okay, so Apostle Paul is the first person who preached the salvation for entire humanity. And all the other apostles followed him. And the third revolutionary uh, teaching and aspect of Apostle Paul's theology is the church is the body of Christ. The unified uh, group or the group that is uh, be, that believes in Jesus Christ should be considered as the church and the church is not just an organization, but it is the body of Christ. This is one of the major aspects from Apostle Paul's theology. So Jesus died, so all died, and all will be resurrected. I mean, uh, all are uh, included in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and those who believe in him will experience the resurrection. And salvation is available for entire humanity. All are included. And the third thing is... Um, uh, church is the body of Christ. Do you think these three uh, uh, these three aspects are something we GV at GCI are very strongly uh, believing and very strongly teaching about inclusion of everybody and uh, uh, what we call um, federal Jesus as a federal head, uh, vicarious humanity of Jesus. That's what we talk about. Vicarious humanity of Jesus, body of Christ, as a, and we are working as a team-based pastor-led ministry. These are the three very strong aspects that GCI also we are very strongly teaching. And uh, Paul's death, some say he was dead in between 62 to, 62 to 64 in Rome. And some say he did not die in Rome, but uh, uh, he died uh, somewhere in Spain. We don't know, but a majority of the people believe that he he was dead and he was killed by Nero. I mean, he was beheaded by Nero uh, uh, at 64 or 63 AD, something. And uh, his teachings have influenced every generation of Christian thinking. There is nobody, no Christian who is not influenced by Apostle Paul. And what are Apostle Paul's contribution to Christianity? After Jesus, Paul is the most significant figure in the Christian history, as we all know. He is known as an apostle, one who is sent, since he had a vision of Jesus Christ, that is at the, his encounter with uh, Jesus at the road to Damascus. Uh, in this sense, he is an eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus. And in fact, all the apostles are one, uh, they're called by Jesus, Apostle Paul is the only apostle called, was called by the resurrected Jesus. There is a unique experience Apostle Paul got. And the kind of uh, experience Apostle Paul has, the kind of experience other apostles have, is entirely different. And Apostle Paul, after his uh, encounter, he stayed uh, uh, in that place for a while. And then what happened? He went to Arabia for three years. In the book of Galatians, we find and he went to Arabia where he received the revelation from the Lord. And about this, we are going to discuss more as we talk about his theology in the following weeks. So his experience is entirely different. That's why his theology is also quite different from other, episode, uh, other apostles. And Paul's letters constitute about 25% constitute about of the New Testament writings. And his uh, writings, they were preserved by 
all the uh, i mean the early church and all his epistles they are addressed to certain people but all these epistles were uh, read in almost all the churches they uh, so he's some uh, his letters like if he writes a letter to ephesus if uh, church at ephesus it is not just read at ephesus and after reading it in, uh, i mean openly in ephesus they used to send the same letter to philippi to like that they used to circulate all these uh, letters that is how christian teachings christian dogma has been taught to uh, the churches in the apostolic period and what we'll do now is was some basic and simple lessons we can learn from or we'll see what the what are the simple lessons we can learn uh, from the life of uh, apostle uh, apostle paul there are so many valuable lessons we can uh, learn from his uh, life he is often told people to follow and imitate him even has he imitates jesus and it is such a very uh, such a powerful statement and it's very difficult for us to say to follow me as i follow jesus or imitate me you know uh, so he is so courageous to say that and we can see the kind of confidence he has uh, in his living uh, but at the same time this word should not be misunderstood he is not saying i'm for i'm exactly imitating jesus so imitate me as i am doing exactly no that's not what he meant what he meant is don't follow me if i do not follow jesus there are certain statements which has to be inter interpreted uh, in contrast this is a, this is a method of interpretation one of the rules we have to interpret a certain statement as uh, certain statements in contrast this is one among them imitate me as i imitate christ should not be interpreted just do as i am doing he is saying do not follow me if i do not follow jesus uh, that's that's so that we need to learn and he said that in first corinthians 4:16 uh, <clears throat> and then uh, philippians 3:17 in many other places we can find such statements so we are going to look at few lessons from the life of apostle paul number one lesson we can learn from the basic information that we have about apostle paul is conversion is possible for anyone we don't know how god works he works in mysterious ways and um, we don't know we must be thinking about some extreme people in our own country these fellow will never be changed we may have some people in our head sometimes in our own family we may have we don't know how god works so professor paul is such a religious person who was hating christians and persecuting christians who was very strong in his own religion and has his uh, uh, financial status his status in the community and uh, such a person god uh, god chose him and he changed we find in first timothy chapter 1 15 to 16 says this is the faithful uh, faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief if a chief sinner like me could be saved any person can be saved you know and uh, especially someone like apostle paul who is in such a big position religious position and with such a religious education if he is changing means it is the theological reformation in in their lives and our church gci is actually modern day miracle and there are very few who could uh, uh, who could take the reformation you know we all might have met jesus you know uh, apostle paul met it it has it is a dramatic experience he had he saw uh, the light and he fell from the horse but definitely i can say gci saw the light of god's gospel and it fell down from its pride and became a small church and still not just surviving but thriving now we came to realize the true gospel of jesus christ so this is another example that we have in print of us if apostle paul could be changed uh, can be converted uh, can be uh, you know he he can be converted anyone can be converted so my brother Uh, brothers and sisters don't lose hope 
you may be playing for your family or you may be playing for some friends or maybe thinking about some other person who whom you may think very staunch and very strong uh, unbeliever we don't know if paul person like paul could be changed if a, a denomination like wcg could be changed and converted and uh, that person also can be converted so let us be hopeful this is a lesson we can learn from apostle paul's life a conversion is possible with anyone number 2 lesson if paul could be forgiven all of us can be forgiven okay uh, in acts chapter 2 verse 4 22 verse 4 apostle paul uh, says i persecuted this way to the death the which means i persecuted the church to the death binding and delivering into prisons both men and women and he also says in first timothy 1 Uh, 12 to 14 and i thank christ jesus our lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry although i was formerly a blasphemer a persecutor and an insolent man but i obtained mercy because i did it in ign- uh, ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our lord jesus was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in christ jesus so another lesson we can learn from the life of paul is if paul could be forgiven anyone can be forgiven and all of us can be forgiven so sometimes we will be struggling uh, to come to the throne of god uh, in prayer because we we must be doing a sin repeatedly we want to overcome but we may have not uh, you know we must be struggling to overcome it so if paul could be forgiven all of us can be forgiven so people ask question uh, can we see hitler in heaven i don't know but we cannot lose hope <laughs> who knows okay <laughs> who knows you know if paul can be forgiven hitler also can be forgiven <laughs> if hitler can be forgiven you and i can be forgiven so let us leave the discomfort that we have let us leave the guilt that we have in our minds and come before the throne of god with confidence as the author of hebrew says in hebrew chapter 9 verse 10 the blood of jesus cleanses us from all our conscience so let us come before him with confidence so second lesson is if paul could be forgiven all of us can be forgiven third lesson it is the same plan for all of us to be saved okay how paul saved the same way all of us are also going to be saved what is the way oh, people can be saved we can find in the scripture acts chapter 9 from verse 3 to 6 as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you lord then the lord said i am jesus whom you are persecuting it is hard for hard for you to kick against the goads so he uh, he trembling and astonished and said lord what do you ha- what do you want me to do then the lord said to him arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do okay then uh, he came to ananias uh and the same thing he's rep- uh, reporting in acts chapter 22 or 16 where he says and now uh, why are you sorry why are you waiting arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the lord so apostle paul he was told go meet ananias where he heard the gospel he was baptized and he is uh, in acts chapter 22 also it is talking about believing and baptizing for the remission of sins so for everyone it, there is only one formula that is we have to believe in jesus and uh, we should be baptized i'm not talking uh, if somebody is not baptized he will not be he is not saved this is a symbolic statement for that it is not a, exactly this is a practice we have to do if somebody didn't get baptism they will be in hell it, there is nothing to do as all those who believe in jesus are saved so only plan for people to be saved is believing in jesus being baptized in jesus, in jesus. Ba- being baptized in jesus means being uh, i mean identifying ourselves in jesus in simple words so that is the same formula used for apostle paul and it is the same formula for 
all of us. So the third lesson is uh, all of us have to be believing in Jesus and baptizing in Jesus. And the next lesson we can learn from the Apostle Paul's life is our behavior among the brethren matters. Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12, where he says, You are witness, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. We have a booklet on saved. What next? We, are, so we believe in Jesus. What do we need to do? And we are Apostle, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Pastor Dan, he, he writes an article saying, Why behavior matters? That's where that's how it starts. Okay, so our Christian behavior is very much important among the believers and even outside. Apostle Paul, he believed in Jesus, such an educated man, and being in such a high position where he planted many churches and has great respect everywhere. And he very strongly, very confidently saying, "You know how we believe behaved in between. I mean, in your presence, which tells." the importance of our behavior among the uh, brethren and others. So third lesson is about our behavior among the brethren matters. And next thing is, oh, it's, it must be very difficult for us to take from the life of Apostle Paul. That is, as soon as Apostle Paul, he was converted, he had the encounter with Jesus. He started ev doing evangelism. This is where we are uh, struggling in our church. But anyway, this is one of the lessons we need to learn from us, Apostle Paul's life. And we should be practicing it in our church very, uh, very much. Acts chapter 9, verse 20 to 21 says, Immediately he preached Christ in the synagogues uh, that he is the Son of God. Means Jesus. He started teaching Jesus is the Son of God. Immediately. Okay. So the moment we put our faith in Jesus Christ and we are saved, we are becoming evangelists. We need to learn. Uh, we need to learn that lesson, and we should be teaching that. We should be doing that. I know some of us must be finding it difficult to do. Uh, um, what I would like to say at this point is, there is no excuse for us from evangelism. We have to talk about Jesus, and the methods we choose can be different. Sometimes what happens to us is we Christians we think evangelism means. Or somebody taking tracks and standing in a place and distributing. That is evangelism, we think. Somebody taking a mic and speaking about Jesus. Oh, repent and believe the kingdom of God is at hand. You people uh, have to believe in Jesus. Otherwise, you will go to hell. Or taking a placard and standing in the uh, crowded places saying, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. You know, my way, highway, uh, all these. May, those are some kind of methods, of course, I understand. Uh, there can be many other methods. You find your own creative method. You find your own method where you invest your heart and soul and spirit and mind and you do it. But there is no excuse for us from being an evangelist. That is the lesson we learned from Apostle Paul's life. Immediately he saved, immediately he had an encounter with God. He went and he started doing evangelism. So I believe and pray and hope that in GCI India, we will, all of us, we find our own creative methods. Yeah, the methods where we are comfortable and do evangelism. And the next um, thing we need to also look at, uh, learn from Apostle Paul's life is about the motivation he has behind his service. What is the motivation Apostle Paul has for his service? He writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 10, For I am the least of the apostles whom I am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me uh, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Here we can see the motivation of Apostle Paul. The motivation is his complete contentment in God. I am who I am. I am or I am what I am in Jesus Christ. He's completely content and uh, 
he is identifying himself completely in jesus christ that with in that contentment complete fear, sense of completion he is going and doing ministry and uh, the motivation for our ministry is not the world is going to hell so we have to save the world that is called uh, savior syndrome okay if you did not save this person if your neighbor gee god is going to ask you in the heaven when he takes his accounts oh you did not speak about me to your neighbor so you got my minus and negative five marks. No, it is not that way. That is not the motivation we have. The motivation or our motivation should not be this also. Oh, other churches have 2,000 members, 5,000 members. Our church has only 30 members. We have to increase our membership. So we'll go on. We have to increase our members. So we do evangelism kind of work. That is also not the right motivation. We are not the saviors. To save the world, sometimes we say, if you don't go for Jesus, who shall go for Jesus? You are the voice of Jesus. As if Jesus is handicapped and helpless to go and preach. Look at the life of Paul. All people were scared to go to talk to Paul, uh, scared to go to Paul and talk. He himself stepped in. See the kind of miracle it happened. Who he found say he brought somebody who influenced generations. 2,000 years he influenced and his influence is going to be there even the, till Jesus come. So that should not be our motivation. If I don't go for Jesus, Jesus will become handicapped or who shall go? Okay. I understand sometimes these kind of uh, things, they might have moved us. Even uh, there, I would like to say God works even through our foolishness. So I'm not judging them, but that is not the right motivation for us. The right motivation for us is out of contentment in God's love and out of contentment in Jesus Christ. And once we do, as Apostle Paul said, I could, we can say like, you know, I, can, I did the work, I labored uh, more abundantly than any of us. That's a, such a confident he could say because he worked out of full contentment, not out of emptiness or gaps or not to help God, but out of love and joy, as Jesus said, you know, whoever drinks this water, it will become a fountain of life in their hearts. So the same way, it will overflow from us. That's a lesson we can learn from Apostle Paul. Another lesson we can learn from Apostle Paul is, he says, everything is cheap in comparison with the eternal life. Okay. And uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 30, 11, it says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know I, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. From the, from such a powerful scripture. He say, he explains what all he has in Philippians. And he said, he says, all these things I count as rubbish in comparison with the knowledge of Christ in comparison with the eternal love and life that I received from Paul. So everything is cheap in comparison with the eternal life that we receive from Jesus Christ. This is a lesson Apostle Paul teaches us. And we can learn from Apostle Paul's life. And uh, another lesson from Apostle Paul's life, uh, uh, we can learn looking at his sacrifices. Okay. Uh, he is willing to give up his former former religion and its associates. <laughs> Let me ask you a personal question: Are we uh, could we completely uh, give up our former religion? I I'm talking about even WCG, okay? And sometimes I hear the comments and discussions we have that makes me feel, you know, uh, by God's grace, we could be reformed and we are progressing, but still somewhere we got stuck in certain things, right? So if there are any of those, let us think about them. Okay. Apostle Paul, one of the great things he sacrificed was he sacrificed his religion. 
the moment he sacrificed his religion he lost his money he lost his people he lost his position he lost his value and he could not find safety for his own life his life was in danger and hearing the testimonies of some of uh, peop some people who were being persecuted in their own homes you know they challenge us right so are we ready to give up our religion completely apostle paul did so let us also personally introspect about it okay uh, and ultimately truly he lost his life also for the sake of jesus christ he gave his life as a martyr so uh, as philippians chapter 2 verse 21 verse 29 says the apostle paul's life teaches one of the things he said was uh, uh, for it was been granted to you on behalf of christ not only to believe in him but also to suffer for him philippians 129 says that so as we believe in jesus it is granted to us to suffer for him also so when we believe in jesus we should be ready to be suffered for jesus and apostle paul was like this is a lesson we need to learn from the life of paul and one words i one scripture portion i would like to read where he explains explains how he was suffered second corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 28 uh, are they ministers of christ i speak as full i am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in prisons more frequently in death often from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day I have been in the deep. In journey, often. In perils of water. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen. In perils of the Gentiles. In perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils among the false brethren, in wearing, sorry, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting, often, uh, in cold nakedness. Besides other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. Here he explains how he suffered for Christ. Ultimately, he lost his life. So he's very strongly believed. If I believe in Jesus, I also given, uh, sorry, I'm also given to suffer for him. As he wrote in Philippians 1 verse 29. So his life tells us we should be prepared to be suffered. We know like, you know, people in India, we know, especially Christians, we know we can feel the pulse. Suffering is ahead of us. People in the world, they know suffering is ahead of us. I mean, Christians in the world, they know. Suffering is ahead of us. So let us be prepared and uh, to suffer for Jesus. And uh, another thing we need to learn from Apostle Paul's life is struggles versus the great reward we receive. And he suffered all these things. And uh, this is what he says. Um, for the things which we are... Um, he said, for our, for our light affection, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. He is comparing his sufferings with the eternal reward he is going to receive. He says, for we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed. We have building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. So what all the sufferings we are going to, we are suffering, there are no comparison with the eternal life and eternal glory, the eternal rewards that we are going to receive from God. This is a lesson Apostle Paul teaches from his own life in example. And uh, uh, just two more uh, thoughts I will present and close. Uh, another lesson we can uh, learn from Apostle Paul's life is uh, he laid down his war and uh, he received. Uh, he is awaiting for the crown that he has and he writes uh, uh, in Timothy about the same. Uh, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. And very confidently he speaks and which challenges us, could we speak these words as Apostle Paul taught? 
and uh, he lived and he said the second timothy 4 verse 6 to 8 chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 for i am already being pounded uh, sorry for, for i am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith finally there is laid upon me the crown of righteousness which is the lord the righteous judge will give to me on the day and not to me only but also to all who love his appearance such a great ending such a great closing of his life and uh, we all should try for it and he says i a great crown is awaiting me and he says not only for him and himself but for all of us he challenges us to have a great ending it's not about starting having a great beginning but great ending and uh, and finally the lesson we learn from the life of Apostle Paul is death is gain for those who believe in Jesus. He says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 to 24, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, but I live in the flesh. This will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, two having desired to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh in uh, sorry, is more needful for you. For him to live is Christ and to die is gain. Death is a gain. It is not a loss. For we Christians, we don't, serve, we don't uh, lose anything in death, but we are going to gain only. That's what Apostle Paul teaches. And let us be motivated and his life teaches. So these are the things we can learn from the Apostle Paul's life. And there are many more. And these are the few interesting and uh, I felt spiritually encouraging teachings from his life. Uh, of course, I could uh, spend more time on details uh, of his life. But I chose this because uh, in the next session, in the, sorry, in the next week, I wanted to connect the theology and with his life events also. That's the reason I'm not touching all his uh, life events. So what are the lessons that we have learned? And once we just read and then we'll close and I would like to give you a couple of questions for us to discuss about. Paul knew his death was gain, number one. We are going back. And uh, he completed his race and he received the crown and he's uh, hopeful about it. And he compared his struggles and he found it is nothing in comparison with the reward that he's going to receive and it is the same for us. And as believers of Jesus, we are also not only given to believe in him, but we are also called to suffer for him. So we should be prepared to suffer for Jesus. And uh, we should be ready to sacrifice for Jesus. And everything becomes cheap in comparison with the eternal love and life that Christ gives us. And the motivation for our ministry should be the contentment in Jesus Christ. And as believers of Jesus, the moment we put our faith in Jesus, we receive our salvation, we are we become evangelists. And Apostle Paul was an evangelist immediate after his conversion. And there is no excuse for us. And we need to find our own comfortable creative methods to be evangelists. And our behavior among the brethren and others, it matters. And... Uh, we have the same plan to be saved as Apostle Paul saved, that is to believe in Jesus and to be baptized in Jesus, which means to be identified in Jesus. And if Paul could be forgiven, all of us can be forgiven. So let us take have the confidence to go come before the throne of God. And uh, conversion is possible with anyone. So let us not lose hope about any person that we, had, we desire the poor to see them in the kingdom of God. Let us not lose hope. Conversion is possible with anyone. These are the lessons we can learn from Apostle Paul's lives. And I would like to bring before you just a few questions so that we can engage in conversation. I'll read the three questions or let me share. Uh, so I'll read the question, then we can discuss about them. Number one. Have you had your personal encounter with Jesus anytime? 
it, it's more of a personal experience for you. We can show you. Please feel free in case if you had, you can sh to share. And number two things, what are the difficulties we face as we go through the reformation or change of perspective? Apostle Paul, he underwent through his encounter. And our church, we underwent the reformation. Both are similar. So what are the difficulties that you have faced? And I'm asking this because um, we are called to be into the leadership team. So I want to know the pulse of the people, minds of the people, hearts of the people, so that we can minister them better. Uh, so you please share with us uh, what are the difficulties you we face as we go through the reformation or a new encounter. And the third thing, um, <clears throat> where does your personal spiritual identity lies? For Apostle Paul says, yet not I, but Christ in me. Where does our personal spiritual identity, or let me tell you another word, where does our personal spiritual pride lies? So these are the three questions I would like to bring before you to discuss and open for the discussion in case if you have any questions you can ask. And some of the things may be clarified in the following two weeks. Thank you. We just have just a few minutes left to reach the hour. If it is okay with all of you, we can take an extra five minutes. Is that okay? Uh, and uh, you can bring your thoughts. So go ahead. We won't waste time. Go ahead. If you have any thoughts or questions, go ahead and ask. Uh, maybe I'll start. <laughs> uh, Praveen, you mentioned about um, the criteria for apostleship is that you must be an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. Yes. So um, uh, that means that nobody can call himself an apostle today. Today. Nobody, <laughs> yeah, there is no apostles today, but definitely there is an apostle ministry uh, today. There are no apostles. Right. So somebody who uh, uh, says that he can claim to be an apostle of Jesus, which is similar to the apostleship of the 12 disciples and, of course, the following, Matthias and uh, Paul. We cannot do that. And that's unfortunately a very bad practice that some people call themselves apostles today. <laughs> Yeah, that's so unfortunate. Many, especially these days, it's becoming even more. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know how to say, like, you know, every, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry are calling themselves as apostles, uh, <laughs> especially in our city also it's happening. Uh, you know, there is no apostles uh, be, because the very purpose behind them using the, the, using the word also is to gain attention. Right. So... There are no apostles, but there is definitely apostle ministry. Which is more like an evangelist. More, more evangel church planting, in other words. That uh, one of the questions mentioned uh, how, uh, I mean, the fact that we become automatically an evangelist, you know, when we believe in Christ. I'd be eager to hear uh, from the others what are the things that we can do to be uh, a witness for Jesus in this world. It's not an easy world to live in uh, or to be a witness. Any thoughts on, the, on how we can be a witness for Jesus? And that is what, according to the study done, I mean, we... Uh, it is incumbent on us to become a witness for Jesus. What are your thoughts on that? Go ahead, bud. Uh, I, I go along with what uh, Praveen uh, mentioned. Very true. 
that uh, when we receive Christ in us, it's uh, we receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit expects uh, in us uh, enables us to witness to Christ. It is we are just as he says the ministry of uh, of an apostle, ministry of an evangelism. We don't call ourselves uh, evangelists. No, like uh, I remember reading in some of our literature that uh, uh, not all are. Uh, called to be evangelists by way of title or by way of a ministry, you know, uh, like an apostle, min, uh, apostle, then uh, your evangelist, a teacher, a pastor, helps, etc. But uh, definitely each one can witness to Christ in, a, in that way as a Christian, as the body of Christ, as belonging to Christ. Um, the Holy Spirit will definitely use us in some way, uh, would want to use in some way or the other to witness to Christ. Uh, well, I have not mentioned how we do it, <laughs> as Praveen mentions. Uh, various, you know, let the uh, let us uh, let us meditate. Let us uh, ask the Holy Spirit to show us uh, what God would want. Definitely, uh, behavior matters, and definitely, he, uh, we who are called and who have the Spirit in us, the Spirit of Christ, would want to uh, uh, speak out or show forth Christ, uh, which the Holy Spirit would want us to do it. Though we are not called as an evangelist uh, by way of title, uh, every Christian is uh, has to witness to Christ. Any other thoughts on being a witness? Anil, go ahead. Well, I think as, as the Bible itself says, we have to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and you know glorify God in heaven. So I think as Praveen also mentioned, our day-to-day -day living, our behavior, our talk, our walk has to reflect Jesus Christ. So that is the, the greatest uh, witness to others. That is one. And second, I think uh, we can engage people. We can engage our neighbors, uh, you know, and, and, and sort of uh, uh, witness to them. Of course, that also implies some interest on their part. And I'd like to mention an uh, experience we had that our neighbor here, you know, a couple, elderly couple, and uh, they just asked us, we were talking and they just asked us, let's uh, meet someday and have a glass of beer somewhere and all that. So we went out one evening and the talk turned to Christianity. And somehow, I don't know, she said, I know you people are very devout Christians and this and that, what do you believe in? So all the, the conversation started. <clears throat> and that's how, you know, we, it was, it was almost for an hour and a half. And they asked a lot of questions. We tried to answer as much as possible and so on. And this really piqued uh, the, their interest, especially the, the wives. And then she said, look, I'd like to, you know, get together with you and know a little more about this thing. So I think that's the way, uh, I'm not saying that's the only way, but at the same time, we can't go knocking on doors and saying, look, as, as Praveen said, the end is near, repent, and so on. So I think our day-to-day -day living and then engaging people as and when the opportunity affords. That's definitely an encouraging uh, uh, story to hear from you, Anil. That's really yeah, We ourselves were surprised. <laughs> Absolutely. The best way is anything. Let us involve in a in, in, let us initiate a conversation. That's all. Correct. Actually, Correct. many of us have a unique uh, experiences because some of us ask, well, how did you, you turn from Hinduism to becoming a Christian? So everybody has something unique to offer. So that's how I think it, every human being has something to offer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember somebody mentioning uh, in the church uh, that uh, uh, regarding how to engage a person in Christ uh, as one of the ways is to uh, break the ice by saying, "May I pray for you?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, nobody would say, "Don't pray." I don't need prayers. You know, you just say, "May I pray for you?" You know, I would. Pray for your welfare, for your, you know, for um, whatever, you know. Prayer helps everyone. 
and uh, so you know they would say go ahead and pray you know and uh, holy spirit can take that opportunity to you know touch their hearts with the words right. uh, right. and speaks to us yeah yeah i think that's a good point because uh, many times i've heard uh, you know i've been requested by my hindu friends sometimes even muslim friends you know just asking me to pray for them which uh, which is nice yeah <laughs> talking of uh, evangelism i remember watching uh, seeing this uh, uh, picture on the january 6 insurrection at uh, the capital in the us a man was standing with a big placard saying jesus saves and uh, people on the very close to him were also carrying guns <laughs> <laughs> So, not a mockery of evangelism, I guess. <laughs> it's a mockery here. It's just a mockery. <laughs> right. Any other thoughts or? Hmm. i thought that one point i i would just like to reiterate uh, probably you mentioned uh, uh conversion is possible even with the most stubborn sinners so uh that gives us a lot of hope that uh, you know i think indulging in prayer we can hope that even those who are enemical to christianity god has the power to bring them to you know on their knees probably any, any any other thoughts we are uh, yeah we gone uh, slightly over time oh nothing much pastor i'll uh, next week we'll discuss about uh, theology of paul and then uh, epistles of paul and then at the end of it i can give my notes also to uh, i can make it available to you wonderful okay well thank you so much for joining today pleasure to have you all uh continuing to attend and uh, uh we pray that you will have a good rest of the day but before we uh leave may i request uh, uh vanessa would you like to lead us in the closing prayer today I think she's frozen. Uh yeah. Yeah, I think she she has probably lost the connection internet connection. Uh let's see for a moment. And all those who are close to us, I thank you for taking care of us and keeping us safe, healthy and happy. I thank you for giving us so many people in our lives to guide and direct us and show us the way. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings. We ask for your blessings on the people who are still to hear your word. Your blessings on the people who have heard your word but still need to have faith and trust in you. In Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved son's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.